What is printing people? Welcome back to Custom 3D. Now today, I'm gonna go, I guess, off the script. I don't write a script for all my videos, but I'm just gonna go into this with only one plan, and that's to tell you my experience with building a 3D printing farm. So stay tuned, guys. I hope you enjoy this and learn a little bit about what I do and what you could potentially do as well. So to start off, why don't I go into a little bit of a background of my company and where it started. So my company first started in, uh, I guess, summer of 2019. Now it wasn't incorporated yet, but I started the Facebook uh, page and I have my first 3D printer, which was a Monoprice Mini Delta. And I just basically took pictures and posted it on Facebook of the 3D printed stuff. Uh, that I made and my cousin she encouraged me to do that and start a company and whatever so that was going into my freshman year of college and the company was put aside and I was just sort of saying oh I have a 3d printer I can 3d print stuff sort of thing for a little while and then uh, February 27th uh, of 2020 is when I incorporated my business officially uh, to an LLC. Now, the reason I did that was because I thought, you know, uh, I probably need to be careful because if I start making money, I need to pay taxes. I don't want to get screwed because negligence is not an excuse uh, in the eyes of the IRS. And if you make too much money, don't pay taxes on it, uh, you'll be screwed and they don't care who you are. They'll want your money because <laughs> government sucks um <laughs> but anyways i digress i went through that whole year uh, oh obviously i'm not gonna skip over that uh so covid hit and in march i uh was inspired by other designers and designed my own mask uh and uh, basically used a soldering i printed flat on the bill plate and used a soldering iron um to sort of make it conform to your chin and it was make you know a one size fit all mask with two vents right here and you use makeup pads for filters and this is back when you know obviously you couldn't get a surgical mask because uh there was too many that were needed and not enough were made yet but once production caught up i couldn't compete with you know uh their pricing and i just stopped selling them eventually but i did some ear savers and things like that and people really enjoyed those. The touchless keys that you use for opening doors, excuse me, and things like that. So let's move on to that summer when I started really wanting to put some more energy in my company and I joined this networking group uh, called BNI, which is all over the country and all over the world actually. And this group is based in Wakefield, which is only 20 minutes from where I am. And I thought it was a great idea because if I didn't get any you know, business from these people, I could learn a lot about business and how to run that. And I think that's perfect of how to describe my experience with BNI. Uh, yes, I've gotten referrals and I've gotten my investment back, but I think that the more valuable piece here is they've helped develop my company into what it is today. And I've learned a lot from those people. So uh, I guess the biggest thing I could give you in, uh, for advice is to join your local BNI group. There's probably one within a half an hour where you live. Uh, and I really think it's a great idea. Um, even if there's not a lot of people in it, join it. There's usually a lot of knowledge in those groups and they could teach you a lot about business and they might know somebody who might be able to help you out and get you referrals and help build your company. Uh, that was, it's been the biggest piece of my company in growing and uh, not only uh, how to run my business from a marketing standpoint, but from the behind the scenes in uh, financing and uh, not spending too much money, knowing what to spend it on uh, and things like that. So people really, you should join a BNI group uh, just to start off. Uh, you know, you might not need it in the future, but it's a great thing to, to meet people, meet great people, 
you know, you'll build relationships that'll last a lifetime. So I highly recommend it. So why don't we move on to later that year of 2020, December, which was the best month my company had. I sold a lot of, you know, knickknacks for Christmas. And that's really what jolted me into moving into here. Uh, I moved into this office January 15th, uh, 2021. And uh, it's been really great so far. And this has helped me bring my company again to the next level. And uh, those people in BNI helped me figure out what spot would be good for me. I, there was a commercial realtor in there that gave me some advice and what to look for uh, and things like that. And luckily, I knew somebody uh, from a prior relationship and he got me in here uh, and he's an amazing tenant. And uh, this is a really great space because it makes me feel like when I come here, you have to work, you have to get things done. You're not in your parents' basement anymore. You wanna bring this company to the next level. You have to be here, you know, a long time every day, pushing out YouTube videos, pushing out marketing content, uh, updating the website, uh, making new merch, which is new to my website. I have some podcast merch for knowledge is power. If you don't know that, I have a podcast. Some of the episodes are up on this YouTube channel. Uh, you should check out that merch. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a shameless merch plug. I feel like I've got a million subscribers saying that even though I don't. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that when I moved in here, it's been great. And my company really progressed from what it used to be. Uh, before that, I was making a lot of keychains for companies. I was saying I was a promotional items company. Uh, and I was really trying to find my way and what I really wanted to do and what my company should be doing. And the promotional items keychains is really good, but the thing is, is every keychain has to be perfect. And when you're ordering keychains and people order hundreds at a time, it's really painstaking to make sure all those keychains are good. And if you don't get a good batch of them, it's not gonna work out. You know, you don't have good layer adhesion and people are gonna be like, what the heck, these are crap. And you'll just get a poor view. So uh, I started to move away from that simply because of the painstaking process it was to produce those kind of promotional items. And I found my niche in prototyping. Now this is really great. I call it 3D printing on demand or 3D print on demand. Uh, people just send me files and I print them. It's really that easy. And if sometimes if people don't have files already, I can do 3D scanning, I can do CAD, anything above, you know, every, everything when it comes to that sort of th stuff, I can make file from scratch for you. Uh, and that's where I found my niche and that's where my company is. And that's where I plan on keeping my company for the near future. Who knows, something else might come up uh, and that's my, what my company might be doing. But the great thing about 3D printing is that your equipment isn't just suited for one thing. It's suited for a lot of different production needs and uh, it's, it's just amazing 3D printing. So that's sort of where I am now. So let me explain to you how I got going uh, in terms of from a technology standpoint, the equipment I've been using. So currently I have three CR10 minis, two Ender 3s, a Vox Lab, Aquila, uh, two Sunlu S8s, a Elugumars Pro with the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station, and what's printing is, I don't know if you can hear it or not, it's a Prusa Mark III S Plus, which I used to have an MMU on, and if you've been watching my channel, you'll know my thoughts on the Prusa MMU, which is not good, spoiler alert, but you should go check that video out. I'll link it right here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the first printer I had after my Monoprice Mini Delta was a CR10 Mini. And basically, I didn't want to spend the extra money on a uh, CR10, which is like $400. You know, I just wanted to see if I can get in a CR10 Mini, and I heard about it on my 3D printing nerds channel. Uh, and it's been great. They all have been great. And uh, those are what I would recommend for you to get started with your 3D printing farm. So yeah, basically that's where my company is at now. If you have any questions for me, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Check out all the links and make sure you check out my new custom 3D merch and Knowledge is Power merch 
on my website and that will be linked in the description below as well so thanks guys make sure to stay tuned to the channel for more great 3d printing content and i'll see you in the next one